Uh, Steve Scarola with Omni Cable. Uh, you guys have talked a lot about uh, some of the good decisions that you guys have made. Uh, could you guys maybe talk about you know maybe some choices that you made that didn't work out and kind of what you learned from it? <laughs> I'm not sure I wanted to admit that. <laughs> I, li I like to forget all the bad all the bad choices that I made. No, I, um, seriously, I. I um, Boy, there's, there's probably been a lot of them. Um, some of them I probably realized at the moment and uh, was able to, um, to, to learn from them and, and move forward. Um, other ones, um, hopefully they're, they, um, I left a wake that wasn't too big to overcome. But I remember one specifically where we had, uh, we had a, uh, it was with, when I was running the retail business and we had a, a, a pricing issue. Um, something about taping a couple of dollars to every box just wasn't making sense, right? Uh, and I had a sales guy that kept saying, it, it'll get better, we're gonna fix this, we're gonna, we're gonna get better, we're gonna fix this, and, and several uh, quarters went by. And um, I remember sitting in Gary's office and, and he said, Kathy Joe, you've gotta fix this pricing problem, you've got to fix this. Uh, and I said, well, you know, you can't turn a, a, a ship on a dime. And he looked at me and he said, it's been two quarters. Um, and it was a significant learning experience. We, we went back to the customer and we raised the prices and we uh, changed the business and, and you know, suddenly the business was, uh, was back on track, go figure. Um, and so the learning from that was that you know, I, I should have, as the leader and the manager of that business, been more um, insistent with the salesperson uh, enforcing through the right business decision and, and instead I, I uh, just uh, kind of trusted him and, and went on with other things. So I, th I think that was one and, and <clears throat> to me everybody's gonna make a, a, a bad decision. If you're not making mistakes, you're not making decisions, you're not doing anything. And I think the key, what we try to empower in our people is that um, if, you make a, if you make a mistake, learn from it and go on. There's no reason to cry over spilled milk. I, I, I can give you a handful. Um, so, when, when somebody leaves your organization, there's sometimes somewhat of a panic to get that position filled, particularly when you think um, you, you, you can't go on without that position. So one, one uh, probably thing I would go back in time is, sometimes we've rushed to make decisions on personnel decisions way, way too quickly, and it, all you've done is create a bigger problem for yourself down the road. So sometimes be a little bit more patient in, in some of our hiring decisions that we made over the years. Um, second one is a couple of these tend with, to, to, to being too um, frugal, I'll say. Um, early on when I started our business, we didn't, um, you know, we, we, were, we were just kind of getting by. We were, we were doing okay, but not great. And our, and our credit manager, um, we had to ask to leave. And I felt like we could probably make it without a credit manager. And um, huge mistake. So, um, you know, th there's vital pieces of, uh, there's vital elements in your organization that are, that are critical to, to what you do. And so don't, over, don't overlook those and, and, and spend the money when you need to spend the money. And then lastly, we've, we've been somewhat of an acquisitive distributor over the last several years. And we've had opportunities to buy good companies and we've had opportunities to buy fixer uppers. And the uh, fixer uppers, even though you think you're getting a great deal, you, you, you really aren't getting a great deal. And what you're, what you're in, in essence doing is, is they, they, uh, they, 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 the, the, the best you can hope for is to make them as good as you are. When you buy a good company, you both get better. When, when you buy a fixer upper, the, once again, the best you can do is to, to, to take their culture and their practices and, and, and try and make them as good as good as you, and along the way, you disrupt your organization from what we're trying to do. It creates a lot of distraction and a lot of uh, mind share that's that's being used, um, you know, in an unproductive way. So those are a couple. I'll add just a couple, and I, I'll, I'll I'll ditto David uh, in saying that probably you know a lot of my bad decisions have been around people. Um, you know, you have good you have you know I, I talked about last night hiring above average people. Um, and you really got to do your investigation and making sure that even you as young leaders, be sure that you do your investigation because living with mediocrity costs your company a whole lot of money. Um, my father-in-law always told me, quit living with the mediocrity, change it and, and, and make it better. Um, and, and, and that is, you know, I haven't, I haven't looked at impatience. I haven't looked at drive. Uh, sometimes I haven't looked at risk. 
And all those things are what people do in the marketplace. So if, you, if you're looking for people, uh, spend the time and, to, and spend the money. And even if it costs you more in terms of salary or bonus to bring that person on board, make the investment because they are worth it. Uh, they'll pay for themselves three, four times over. Um, you, know, the, you know, David talked about acquisitions and some of the things that didn't work out for him. Um, I'll really highlight, he, he mentioned the word culture. I'll really highlight cultural fit. Um, each one of your companies has a culture. If you're a family business, that culture is pretty strong. Um, if you, as you bring people on board and you think about the other things I talked about, but do they really have a cultural fit in your company? I mean, do they really, do they really uh, uh, value your ethics? Do they value your integrity? Um, and, and are they really a part of, of what you want them to be in terms of, and, and will they grow with you? And will they keep that culture? And will they teach others about that culture? Uh, cultural fit is a big deal. So, you know, uh, uh, most, of, most of your decisions around people will always be critical. Um, it drives, it's, it's, it's your best asset. So it should be the most time that you spend. It's your A time is in front of people. Um, probably the three things that I, that I, that didn't work out so well for me. Number one was uh, I tend to have a, as a, Chad and Neil may disagree with this, but I tend to have a big heart with, with most of our people. And I, and I hired a number of people from our competitors when we were trying to grow fast. And some of them weren't the right people, and I held on them way too long. And, and the indicators were all there. My, my people that I trust were telling me, you know, we really ought to do something else. No, no, this is the right person. Because my image of them when they were working for my competitors and writing business against us was different than who they actually were. And, and so I made some bad decisions on hires and then held on to some of them too long. Uh, so that was one thing that I would do differently and we are doing differently now. Uh, secondly is uh, emotions. I'm a, I'm a highly emotional guy. I talk with my hands, I'm, I'm fast paced, I, got, I want a lot of things going on at once. But I also wear my emotions on my sleeves and, and I didn't realize how that was affecting uh, people around me, people reporting to me. I've broken keyboards, I've, I've done, I mean, I've, I, I, <laughs> I've done some things that, 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 that people outside my office got to be cringing like, oh my goodness. And, and I really, the last couple of years, have really tried to, to harness that a little bit because it was affecting, you know, people were scared to come approach me because, you know, I was, I was, I was a bundle of nerves because I'm, I'm highly intense and, and, and it may not seem like that now, but I've, I've tried, to, tried to harness some of that. So the second is understand that, that your emotions affect others, and, and I probably should have known that, and, and I just didn't pay attention to that. And then the third thing was, uh, for me, making mistakes was, was bringing work home with me. I'm 24-7 I'm doing something on my phone, or if I had a stressful day at work, uh, I don't unload it on that. I've got a 20-minute drive away home, and now I unload it. But in the past, I didn't unload that, and I go home, and I'd blow up at home. And, and uh, so, so letting work affect home was a major mistake that did, probably the biggest one. Jay, I think we have just time for one more question, and then what we'll do is we'll get the final thoughts from all of our panelists. They've given us tons of good little nuggets of information. We do have these sheets of paper on the table, if you guys have noticed yet. If you haven't, grab one. Each panelist is going to give us three uh, major takeaways um, after this last question. Hi, I'm Rochelle with Border States. Um, I know you all kind of touched on this a little bit, but in terms of people development and being a leader versus a manager, you know, explaining the why and setting the vision. Do you guys have any success stories or just tactics that have helped you effectively do that? You know, there is a difference between leader versus manager. Um, and, you know, I talked about it last night. It's not about the title. It's about what you teach. Uh, leaders teach, managers manage. They do, they do tasks. Um, you win as a leader when you, can build, when you learn how to build a team uh, and take the ego or yourself out of it and you make others look successful. Uh, bottom line is you're successful because your team is. Um, you know, that's built into your culture. Uh, you can build your own culture. Uh, culture. You, you can build your own culture within your organizations, but at the end of the day, um, leaders build teams, uh, managers build eyes. And, and if you can figure out a way to get that done and make sure that people uh, endorse with you, You'll, you'll win as a, as a leader. You know, like I said before, Jenna gave you those three takeaway things. This is kind of my second takeaway. The first thing I talked about before was staying up on the market trends. That's, that's important on what, what are your customers doing. Second thing is, um, is to find a mentor. And um, 
I've been uh, uh, thankful that some people have chosen me to, to mentor with them. Neil's one of them. Neil and I meet. We missed June, by the way, Neil. Neil and I have met every month. Neil works at a branch that's about an hour and a half away from our headquarters. And Neil and I have met every month since he's been out there, about two years now. And, um, and so my, my suggestion is find a mentor. Ask them to be your mentor. And, um, and talk about the ground rules the first time you meet. What are the type of things we're going to talk about? Uh, how does that affect our relationship, the things we talk about? And, and Neil's done, I, I keep using Neil's example, but he's sitting right here in front of me. He's done a phenomenal job of kind of putting his career path together. And when we meet, he's, he's got it all on paper and we talk about it. And, and what does this look like? And can I do this? And, and, um, and what do I need to do in order to get to these levels? Because this is what I want to do. Uh, and this is where I'm going. Um, be that type of person that has those those things on paper and those things in mind, meet with your mentor, get their inputs on can I do this and what do I need to do to get there? And um, I learn probably more than Neil every time we meet because uh, he, he brings so many other things to the, to the table that, that, that for me is good also. So um, establish a formal mentorship and, and um, it's, it's, it's powerful for both people. I'll share just a little bit that um, I don't want people to think my comment about um, my transition from a manager to a leader was kind of going from doing, being the taskmaster to actually leading a team. Um, I, had a, I had a leader um, that, that I worked for um, that I, I think was, um, he, he, he didn't do enough, right? So it, being a leader doesn't mean you don't do anything. It means you set the vision and you have to make the decisions and you have to take the roadblocks out of the way to let your team be successful. And so part of the challenge of transitioning to being a leader is not just being a, okay, I'm, I'm going to set this vision and it's just magical and everybody has a little bit different leadership style, but it's actually understanding what are the things that I need to do that helps make my team successful. And I think to Glenn's point is, is the, the, some of the best leaders are the ones that really take down the roadblocks make the decisions quickly, give the, give the authority to the team to do things, and then watch that team succeed and be successful. Okay, we're gonna take the last five minutes here, and uh, if you have those sheets of paper ready, we're gonna ask you each to just give uh, your final three thoughts, and I know everybody's been taking notes as we go, but uh, these are kinda like, the big things that you want us to walk away with. I go backwards. Mine's pretty easy. I just gave you one and two. All right. Oh. So, so mine was mine was stay up stay up with the market trends and make yourself valuable to your customers. Um, and and that doesn't mean just reading an article about it. That means attending training and understanding the type of things they're doing internally, so that you can figure out how you can get involved, what your role is in what they're doing. Um, and again, I just talked about find a mentor and meet with that mentor. One of the things I didn't mention was I had a good mentor myself when I was at, e at Eaton. I got lucky. Uh, my boss had, a, uh, had had no children, and his wife was a career person who traveled a lot. So he w we would be the last two at the office almost every night. His wife would be out of town traveling. We'd be the last two at the office. We'd work till 6 or 6.30. He'd say, let's go get a drink. We'd go to happy hour somewhere. We'd just talk. And he became my mentor by default. I was single living in a town, my, my girlfriend was living two hours away, I didn't have anything else to do, so I, I, I got a natural mentorship and I was lucky and learned a lot from that individual. So that was, that's what I try to kind of pay forward to others. Uh, so that's my second one. My last one is, and we've all talked about it here, and it's the most, probably the most important one if you wanna be successful in this business, number three is get involved. So many people can contribute to your success. Get involved in associations, whether you're part of a buying group, get involved in committees and, and, and subcommittees in your buying group if they put together ad hoc groups to, to discover certain things. You need to go up and tell people you want to be involved and they'll get you involved. They're always looking for good people. So whether that's your buying group, whether that's NAD, whether that's a local association. I talked before about associated builders and contractors were involved with that. Find out what associations your customers are involved in, and you'll be involved with them at their luncheons and their after hour type of things and so on. But get involved. Um, my opportunity, I, as an example, I'll give you one quick one. Uh, one of the guys that I served on the lead committee with, he 
uh, 10 years later asked me to be on his board of directors. So I was on his board of directors for three years. And I think for every one input I gave in, I probably took 10 back. And I, and I told him, and he was even paying me for this. And I said, I feel like I should be paying you. He said, I'm learning 10 times more than I'm putting into this. He said, that's fine. Let's just keep on doing it. In fact, I think David serves on that board now. Or are you still serving on that board? On height. Yeah. So David actually serves it. David, we were, we were all in lead together. So that tells you the, the value of, um, uh, of, of getting to know each other and, and, and understanding what people bring to the party because I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I know enough people who are that we can, we can make this thing happen. So get involved is, is my final message and probably the most important one there. Thanks. Um, so so D D Doug's right. I mean, that, that all, all of us, I think, are going are gonna to talk to you guys about staying involved in the industry and, and I think uh, Glenn, Glenn said it early in the, organ early in the uh, discussion that his company's made a great company out of learning and stealing ideas from, from, from other great companies. And, and I, I, I go back, I'll, I'll come back from this meeting today and, and, and tell everybody that, hey, I stole some more good ideas. That pe uh, people at our organization hate when I leave for a couple days to do something like this because they know I'm gonna come back with a million things I wanna get done at, at our organization. So, so, so stay, in, stay involved. Um, you know, it's just a good life. Ne never, never, ever stop learning and, and, and continue to take risks and challenges uh, in, in your career. I, even when you don't think you're ready for it, um, sign up, volunteer, um, do, do, do something that, that you're a little bit uncomfortable with. This isn't probably necessarily comfortable for any of us sitting up in, in a panel. It's, it's not something that we do every day, but it's, it's giving back, it's, it's, it's growing, and, it, and, it, and it's, it helps you as, a, as an individual. And then lastly, I think we touched on it earlier, try and maintain balance in your life. Um, it, it, it's, it's just not all about work. I mean, keep, keep balance with, your, um, with, with, with the other things in your life, your family and, and, and your spiritual side and, and exercise and, and all those good things that, that make you a complete person. And, and uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, inviting us to be part of this. Uh, it's, it's really, really encouraging to me um, to see uh, young people in our industry that I, that, that I know we can leave it to and, and, and feel good about the future. Uh, because we're, gonna, we're you know, there's there's threats to this industry, and and we need great people to be part of it, engaged in it, um, to to ensure its uh, long-term success. So I, I want to give you um, just three three words. Um, one would be aspire, and and aspire to be like a very specific great leader. Um, I think I said it a couple of times that everybody's got a little bit different and unique leadership style and you'll form your own leadership style, but I found it very helpful to identify the one individual that is a great leader and aspire to be like them. And, and if you're fortunate enough to, to get to know them and meet them and, and they can become your mentor, but they don't have to be a mentor to in, inspire and aspire you to be, to be like them. The second one is, is make it personal. And whether that's in, in, um, uh, uh, with customer relationships or employee relationships, I find it goes so far to, to get to know a person as a person, and I've learned this from, from my boss today. Walking through the plant, I used to walk through our plaque factory and say, oh yeah, that's you know the extruder operator, hey, how you doing? And I knew the plant manager, I knew the production schedulers, but I never walked up to a guy like Norman did and said, hi, I'm Norman, what's your name? Oh, my name is Charlie, and he's looking like, why is this president of Southwire asking me my name? But you know what, Norman wanted to know how he's doing, how's it going on the line, and because he's an employee just like all the rest of us, and really making it personal, um, getting to know people's, what, the people that work for you. Do you know how many kids they have? Do you know what their names are? Do you know what their wife, do you know what their wife does? Um, as the organization grows and gets larger and larger, um, you know, when I first started in the industry, I thought, well, that's, that's taboo, you can't, you can't talk about you know, personal things, you have to talk about business, I'm here to sell, right? And, uh, and once you really kind of let that go and understand that it's, 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 it's personal, business is personal, people still buy from people. They might research on the internet, but companies don't buy from companies. And so remember just to make it personal. And the third part I'll, I'll leave you with is, is have fun. I mean, you know, life is, life is too short. Um, the, the speaker this morning was, was great about it. So, you know, who cares? Well, we all care, right? Um, and whether it's at, at work, it's, it's making sales calls, it's at the conference. Um, you know, I said it, said it earlier, it was not easy for me to, to walk into a group of three people last night talking and say, hi, I'm Kathy Joe with Southwire. 
Um, but it was great. I got to meet a lot of great new people. And um, instead of being nervous and, and um, uh, uh, apprehensive about it, I was like, oh, I'm just going to have fun. And um, so no matter whether you're at, you're at work, you're at a conference, whatever you do, if you wake up with a smile on your face and you have fun, it, it exudes that and, and it, it'll make you a better leader too. I want to make a comment about Kathy Joe's second point, and, and just to show you what kind of in, uh, in, uh, impact that can have. Uh, I sent a young lady to uh, the Women in Industry Conference a year ago, and um, she knows what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, and she was, um, she's very stressed in her job. She runs all of our inventory management, our pricing, and all that. She's very stressed in her job and doesn't know if this is what she wants to do for a living. And she went to the conference, and she met this person named Kathy Joe Van. And Kathy Joe spent time with her. She called me that night, and she said, I met this wonderful lady named Kathy Jovan, and she spent time with me, and she talked to me, and we talked about what my struggles were, and we talked about how to get through those things, and so on. And it was just she was a completely different person when she came back because Kathy Joe took the time to talk to her, and it's it's impacted her still today. She still talks about her. Kathy Joe sends her Christmas cards, and and it, it it's impacted her. Just Kathy Joe taking the time to do that. So I I thank Kathy Joe for that. You know, I'll conclude with several sentences. Um, I started with three words, network, educate, and discover. But what, what, are lead, what do leaders do? Leaders ask questions. And they ask and they develop their centers of influence. Leaders listen. They listen to the answers and they take that information and use it. Leaders teach others what they learn. Leaders create teams. And every team has four different style, personality styles. Drivers, amiables, expressives, and, and compliance, or anal, anal, uh, analytics. Those four, team, those four members of a team make up a team. Well, let me tell you something, that team is gonna storm, they're gonna, they're gonna form as a team, start talking, and as they start working through the process, they're gonna storm, big time. Why? Four different personality styles. And then you're gonna have norm. They're going to normalize. They're going to figure out who's who and what everybody's thinking, and then they can perform. That's the four stages of a team. The, the best leader knows how to flex to every one of those styles and knows, how to, and knows when, when they're in that style, and I can go through a whole style category here, but it's not about that. It's about, about the leader being able to understand all four of those styles and how to bring them together as a team. A leader visualizes. A leader knows how to build the vision for that team and gives them tasks. A leader empowers his members of the team. He's not doing the work they are. They're the ones that, that make him look, make, make, him, make the vision look, uh, come to reality. A leader challenges when he doesn't think it's the right thing. Um, the leader inspects everything that he expects. You've heard all these words today. And leaders look at every single problem that that team will endure and take it as an opportunity to learn something different or to change things. You heard from a couple of us about balancing your life. Leaders balance their life. They manage their professional goals with their personal goals. Uh, Kathy Joe said, Had fun, have fun, laugh, laugh out loud. Wake, everybody, wake up every morning, enjoying what you do, and if you don't do that, if you, if you don't wake up every morning and enjoy what you do, then go do something else. Because that balance is really important as a leader. And, it also, and, and if, you, if you're that way, your team knows you're that way. They see it every day. They see it in your eyes, they see it in your speech, and they see it in your actions. So if, if you walk away from any meeting, whether it's this one, others that you'll attend, or if you're sitting in front of your team, if you can always remember to have fun, you will be successful. Uh, with that, um, the only last one we do is sur surround your people, surround yourself with the best people, because you will learn a lot. Thank you all very much for allowing us to participate in your in your panel discussion. Hopefully, you've learned a lot of tidbits today, and uh, and hopefully we uh, we can continue to be a, a a service to you. We're always I think always have open phones and open doors to call, so feel free to yeah. call us. Thank you guys, that was really great. And taking time out of your busy schedules to come be with us really means a lot. Um, so thank you so much. Let's give a big warm. Thank you.